why would I separate or want to separate from source? He, there is no answer for how the impossible happened, but we can start to say, I mean, Helen and Bill went through this. You know, here they are taking down this Course in Miracles. Don't think they didn't stop at some point after a certain amount of chapters and go, <clears throat> Jesus, before we go on uh, with the dictation, we just have one tiny question for you. These are like psychologists, you know, at, at Columbia Presbyterian Medical Center. You better believe they're going to come. It took them a few chapters before they got their guts up. Whoa, wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. How did it happen in the first place? And Jesus basically said, well, you can tell by your emotions that you believe that it happened. You can tell by your emotions, your roller coaster ride going on there, that you believe that it happened. So I'm giving you this course to show you, to take you into an experience that it didn't happen. I've got to do this in egoic terms, because you believe you're an ego. Uh, if you knew you were spirit, <laughs> which is it's just love and bliss and joy and happiness, but if you believe you've separated, if you've got this self-fulfilling prophecy and separation, I've got to you reach you. Do you understand the impact to Christ of us having done that, or to God? Is there, there none? There, or do you think? There is no impact. Because uh -huh. Uh -huh. the, the atonement is the awareness that the separation never happened. Mm -hmm. Now, well, that's why we go, why do we have expression sessions? Why do we deal with all the emotions that are coming up? It's because of the belief that it did. And we have to face it right there in practical terms, in practical symbols, it would be like, talk about giving somebody, if Jesus just came to this planet and basically just got in front of everybody and said, God is, it was just a two word message. Then he kind of did a, one of the Truman Show, bow, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Poof, and he was gone. You know, the, I don't think there'd be much in history books about it, except some crazy alien or whatever that <laughs> happened to say God is, the God is alien. And, and, you know, it was like, seemingly there was a lot of symbols, there was all these parables, you know, the dead getting raised, the lame can walk, the blind can see, you know, it's a big splash. It's like a meteor. And, and basically, Jesus was here not to correct it from the top down, like, all right, you earthlings, you've all got it wrong, you dummies. Uh, God is, and that's all that there is. No, Jesus came to show us forgiveness from the bottom up. To actually show that when you raise up the unconscious and the darkness to the light, the darkness disappears, it dissolves away. He took great patience, the Holy Spirit, through Jesus, to teach these two beautiful parables, and beautiful parables that today, you know, clarifying the commandments, Moses, you know, it was beautiful. It was from the, the bottom up. Just let me say it and see if it's if it's right. So when I feel like I'm going to die, when I'm defending the truth, the pain of that anger and that fight for my own life, here it comes. I hope it's right what I'm saying. That it's actually ego itself wanting to be annihilated. So it's not the truth that I feel that I'm defending. It's actually getting that it's ego, how powerful that is. And that sweet little truth that's sitting right there. And I feel that sweet little truth is just going to die if she doesn't, get, if she doesn't defend it. That's how tough the ego is. Yeah, that's how sneaky and, and tricky it is, in the sense that to, to perceive the truth is kind of like this little flower that's, that's getting stepped on by all these people that are just so busy walking around just stepping on it and stepping on it. You know, that perception itself is an egoic perception. And everything in this world is not only backwards, inside out, upside down, you know, it's, it's like the things that have no value and validity, whatever, are magnified. Look at the Super Bowl. You know, you think this, the Super Bowl means something? I mean, I used to get a kick out of like with the Olympics because it's like I enjoyed the symbol of all the different colors and flags, and I'm like watching the tapestry on the TV set, going, "Oh, this is wonderful!" And they're marching, and all of them, and it's beautiful. And and then let the games begin. Competition, fighting, 
He's just had uh, some Olympics, didn't they, up in, uh, in Vancouver? Wasn't there like a, a bobsledder or something that, that died before they could even... Mm -hmm. Before even started. The opening ceremonies. Yeah. They were like coming on somber faces. Well, we have terrible news. Yeah. You know, it's like, what? You've got a, a whole match of competition coming up, and now they're saying the terrible news is one of the bodies has died. You know, it's, it's like... And whose fault it was. Yeah. And whose fault it was, and who's to blame, and all this and this. But, but you see, in a world of competition, you know, even the Olympics, you start to see that, that to even believe in duality and competition is to believe in the ego. The way it could play out, like you said, where you felt like you, you would have to convince somebody or protect the truth, you know, it's as if, like, the separation has occurred and it's, it's splintered and there's all this other stuff going on now. And then love is like this fragile little seed that uh, every time you plant it, it's, it's, nobody even throws any dirt or water on it. You just lay down on the concrete, uh, you know. Yeah, and it, it can feel that way. And then you start to just say, wow, that's a sneaky ego that's, that's making a world and making a perception where it seems like the truth has to be defended. Jesus comes in with his, his uh, divine logic. He says, the truth is true and only the truth is true. And he says, you must accept both statements to know the truth. That the truth is true and only the truth is true. And when you, when you first read it, it's like, what? Come on, this is... Or she, yeah. Am I like an imbecile? Or what? You know, the truth is true and only the truth is true. And he's like, hang with me, hang with okay. me. Well, there's another uh, workbook lesson where he, he says, if guilt is hell, what is its opposite? And I'm like looking at, I'm reading the page and I'm going, okay, is this like a riddle or something, you know? I, I, might, I should be able to get this. If guilt is hell, what is its opposite? I'm like scratching my head. Am I supposed to like know the answer to this? Uh, is this a, and then he goes on with this next sentence. The problem is, you don't believe that guilt is hell. You see, it starts off with if and then. But he says, the reason you're having trouble with this statement, if guilt is hell, what is its opposite? Is because you don't believe that guilt is hell. You're attracted to it. As long as you believe in the ego, guilt is actually attractive. Or like they say in the 12 steps, the stinking thinking. Oh, I've been sober for, for 12 weeks and I got my pen and this and this, but I got that stinking thinking that still wants to go for the drink. And it doesn't make any sense. Doesn't it seem like the, the belief in guilt is just related to how our brains actually function in terms of always trying to figure out cause and effect? Yeah, but the brain is, remember, it's the body and the brain are just a projection of this mind that's convinced it's guilty. In fact, it's so convinced, we were talking about religion, that, that the, it says in the Bible, we went over this the other day, that, that God created man in his likeness and image, and the old joke is that man returned the favor and created God <laughs> in his likeness and image. In other words, if there's a belief in guilt, then guess what? The ego can use anything in form, including the word God, and it simply invents its own God. A God of pain and suffering and punishment. It invented its own God. That's why the simple message of Jesus was, you know, you know my kingdom is not of this world, I'm calling you out of this world. It's to a spiritual kingdom. The ego inverted the entire message into one of pain, suffering, sacrifice and penance. You know, and no, no wonder people talk, I go all over the world, they tell me they're recovering Catholics. Uh, you know, recovering from, from the, a total disorientation, a, a total flipping the whole message upside down. That's a recovery, you know. And it's in every culture, it's not, obviously not Catholics, but it's just this belief in guilt that permeates all the, the cultures of the world. And science, in terms of cause and effect. Yeah. Science, for every action there's a reaction. Yeah. All of science is based on this belief that there is a separate events, circumstances, and that there is a causative relationship going on between these, these parts. And there isn't. Yeah. It's, it's all part of the false... Yeah.